are discussing topic two. Today, uh, synapses. Good afternoon, children. Uh, generally, daily we are discussing object questions for neat point of view. As we will have examination on tomorrow, cycle test three. So that I am revising tomorrow examination topic in a brief manner in synapses here only. So you see sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Sexual reproduction in flowering plant means uh, what is this here? Flowering plants and your stems. What are the flowering plants? Angiosperms are the flowering plants. Flowering plants are the angiosperms. So what are the sexual organs? Sexual organs are the here male sexual organ, stamen. These are the stamens. Female sexual organ. What are the female sexual organ? Fistule. This is called as the fistule. Fistule is female sexual organ. Stamen is male sexual organ. The stamen, what are the parts will be there? Filament will be there. And here, what is this? Anthers are there. Questions Dipical anther. What is the dipical anther here? Two lobes here. This is this is a thicker. The fertile part of anther is called as the thicker. Here there are two fertile parts of there that can be called dipical anther. Each thicker, how many sporangiums are there? Two sporangiums. Here sporangium, here sporangium, here sporangium, here sporangium. Tetrasporangium. Dipical tetrasporangium anther occurs in the which plants here? Angiosperms. Flowering plant means angiosperm. Pistil means what would be present in pistil? There is a stigma and style, elongated part is the style. This bulged portion, how this is called ovary? Stigma style ovary. If these pistils are singular many, in each flower, here in the what would be there? Pistil in the ovary or gynosium. The gynosium, how many pistils are there? Single pistil are there, many pistil. Suppose you see gynosium means group of pistils can be called as the gynosium. What do you mean by gynosium? The group of pistils can be called as the gynosium. Group of stamens, it will be called as the androsium. What is androsium? Single stamen may not occur in flower. Many stamens are there. Group of stamens, it will be called androsium. Group of pistils, it will be called gynosium. So, in these pistils are, in the gynosium, the pistils are free. How it will be called here? Apocarpus gynosium. How this is called? Apocarpus gynosium. And here, if these pistils are fused, how it will be called here? Syncarpus gynosium. Free pistils. Pistil means here, the unit of gynosium is called as the pistil. In the gynosium, pistils may be one or many are there. If there are many pistils are there, these pistils are fusing, that can be called syncarpus gynosium. Pistils are free, upper carpus gynosium. But in this, what is this here? First one, you see male sexual organ stamen. What is the ultimate aim of this here stamen? Produce the pollen grain, male gametophyte. The stamens, especially in the anther, what can be developed here? Male gametophyte. But in pistil, what can be developed here in the ovary? Female gametophyte. Let us see this here, microsporogenesis, male gametophyte development. Megasporogenesis or macrosporogenesis, female gametophyte development. First, sexual reproduction means what can be produced here? Spores, microspores, macrospores. From that spores, what can be developed? Male gametophyte, female gametophyte. Gametophyte, where it is involving? Sexual reproduction. Which results, what would be formed here? Zygote. Embryo formation, seed formation, fruit formation. These are the post fertilization events. Pre fertilization, before fertilization, what the events are happening, those are called as the pre fertilization. What is the pre fertilization events here? Sporogenesis, gametogenesis, pollination, fertilization. Up to this year, pre fertilization events. After fertilization, what is that? Dragon formation, endosperm formation. Embryo formation, seed formation, fruit formation comes under post fertilization events. Now, let us see what is the microsporogenesis, where it will be there, what is the TS of anther. Let us see this. Yeah. 
you see this is a what you can see a stamen in the stamen this is a filament here this is a filament the proximal end this is a proximal end this is a distal end the distal end of the filament where it is binding binding to the anther but the proximal end where it can bind here it is not need to bind of the important here this is a here like this filament is there this is called as the which end here this is a proximal end this is a distal end one end is touched to the your anther another end where it will be bind here it will be bind to the thalamus you see this is a here uh, seed of the flower on the seed of the flower this is a pistil what is this here pistil next one what is this here this is a stamen next one uh, parala and calyx here parala and calyx flower will be there here the part where the foreign parts are arranged that are we can be called here thalamus another name of thalamus here receptacle so here the proximal end of this here uh, stamen where it will be bind with thalamus another case this proximal end may be bind with the petal it is what is this here sepal it is petal calyx the first hole how it will be called first hole calyx second hole how it will be called here corolla another name of corolla petal so entrance point of you here the proximal end of this filament where it will be fixed it may be bind to the thalamus or petal the answer what is this proximal end of the filament it can bind to thalamus or petal and distal end it can bind to this anther what is the petal part of this filament this is the anther is the petal part of this filament but in anther how many parts will be there anther wall and sporogenous tissue if you get the transverse section how it will be there anther you see this is the anther wall what are the parts will be occurs in anther there is an anther wall occurs and another one is the porogenous tissue occurs porogenous tissue mostly the important parts are the two parts in the anther one is the anther wall another one is the porogenous tissue the outermost thing what is this in anther wall epidermis in anther wall the outermost layer it can be called as the epidermis beneath the epidermis what will be there here endothelium is there beneath the endothelium what will be present middle layers are there two to three layers what will be there middle layers are there beneath the middle layers what will be present tapetum this is the what is this here tapetum is there beneath the tapetum what can be present here four mother cells are there these are the four mother cells and spore mother cell what can be produced here spores spores how they can be modified pollen tetraids these are the pollen tetraids now when you see the here transverse section of anther it looks like this here transverse section here this is looking like this but this only one piece i am taking drawing here how many layers will be there epidermis endothelium middle layers tapetum when is that tapetum what would be there here microspore mother cell that means porogenous tissue but what is the use of this here epidermis epidermis provide epidermal cells arranged in closely compactly without intercellular spaces they can offer protection to the inside tissues and here beneath the epidermis endothelium what is the endothelium cellulose fibers are there major significance of this endothelium there is a cellulose fibers cellulose fibers nature hygroscopic nature but due to the hygroscopic nature what is the use of endothelium breaking of this anther suppose here here it is breaking it is breaking but due to the breaking what will release from anther pollen is released outside if without breaking of this here anther pollen could not release out but here wherever it is breaking here especially stomium location but here what layer is helping for breaking of anther endothelium endothelium layer it has the hygroscopic nature due to its hygroscopic nature it can what would be there capturing water making imbibition and swelling and helping for these what happens dehiscence of anther what is the layer of anther wall responsible for dehiscence or breaking of anther endothelium middle layers beneath the endothelium middle layers are there there is no specific function of the middle layer and beneath the middle layer what would be there tapetum what is the tapetum a nutritive layer this is the innermost layer of anther wall and it is a nutritive layer of this anther and it can nourish the 
developing of pollen grains. Tapetum is the nutritive layer. But in this tapetum, how many nuclei are there? At earlier, one nuclei, but during development, two or many nuclei are there. So tapetum they have this year. At earlier condition, it has one nuclei. During its development, how many nuclei will be there? Two or many nuclei will be there. But so that what is the condition occur? Xenocytic condition occurs in the tapetum cells. Many nuclei condition of it will be called xenocytic condition. So tapetum is the layer, innermost layer of anther wall. It is nourishing the development of the pollen grains. It can provide what can provide here? Provide this here nutrients for development of pollen grains here. And this tapetum, what is the condition? Two or many nuclei condition is there. But inside the tapetum, what would be there? Sporogenous tissue. In sporogenous tissue, what is the important cell? Spore mother cell. Spore mother cell, how they act as meiocyte. What is meant by meiocyte? The cell which is undergoes to meiosis, that is called meiocyte. So that this spore mother cell undergoes to meiosis, what can be produced? Spores. From each mother cell, how many spores are produced? Four. But these four spores, how they can be arranged here? Tetrahedral model. What is a tetrahedral model? This is a tetrahedral model. Four, 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 backside one, tetrahedral arrangement is there. Many arrangement, linear arrangement, decaset arrangement, isohedral, isobilateral arrangement, many different types of arrangements are there in this year, four spores. But what is the most common arrangement of spores here, microspore? Tetrahedral arrangement. This four mother cell undergoes the meiosis, four spores are forming, they are arranged in normally tetrahedral model. But of these, these four spores here, what is the condition? Applied condition. Why applied condition? Spore mother cells are deployed. They undergo stomiosis. Whenever whatever the cell undergoes stomiosis, what is the ploidy of resultant cell? Reduced to half. It is 2N means it is 1N. So spores are 1N. And their mother cells, their spore mother cells are the 2N. Microspore mother cell, deployed condition, undergoes stomiosis. What will form here? Applied spores are formed. How many spores have been formed? Four spores. But this spore, how it is developed here? Pollen grain. When you comes to the pollen grain, how it will be there? You see like this. If you have to see this here, microspore, this microspore, how it is developed here? This microspore is developed by the pollen grain. In this pollen grain, here what would be there? There is a nucleus is there. And there is a cytoplasm is there. Plasma membrane is there. This is what is this pollen grain. But pollen grain, this is surrounded by the two layers. What is the two layers here? The outer layer is, can be called as the exine. Inner layer it can be called as the intine. And there is a vacuole can be. It is a nucleus and vacuole is there. This is a vacuole. What is this here? This is a space vacuole is there. This is a nucleus is there. So here, what would be present in pollen grain? Outer layer is called exine. Inner layer is called intine. But exine, how it is made? This is made up of a material that how it will be called here? Poropolanum. But intine, how it is made here? Intine, it can be made with the pectin and cellulose. Pectin and cellulose are there. But what about the exine? Exine is not continuous. Here there is leaving some apertures. It is an exine. Aperture is there. Aperture is there. Apertures are there. Here it is not a continuous. It leaving the gap. These gaps are will be called here germophores. What are the germophores? A gap is left by exine. That is called a germophore. An aperture occurs on the exine called a germophore. What is the use of germophore for initiation of pollen tube during pollen germination? Germophore is helping. Otherwise, there is no initiation of pollen tube. Suppose your exine is there, pollen tube would not be initiated. It would not emerge out. Therefore, here there is no emerging out of pollen tube. Means here, what happens here? These stems which are produced in the pollen grain, they could not reach this here female gametophyte. Hence, for there is no fertilization. So that what should be there? Initiation of pollen tube formation, it would be occurs due to the germophores only. Germophore is nothing but gaps here. The gaps are aperture, occurs in the exine called as the germophores. But inside what would be there? Intine. How the intine is made? Pectin and cellulose, that is called as the pectocellulose. 
air what would be there vacuum is there nucleus and cytoplasm would be occurs now this is these pollen grains normally here due to presence of enzyme they can be preserved in the form of fossil why it is generally what is fossil here the remains of plant and animal the remains of plant and animal of this organism which was survived once upon a time it present not there those organisms remains called fossil suppose if you have a bone of dinosaur that is a fossil so that if you have a ginkgo biloba pollen grain that is a fossil but what part under goes to fossil hard part bones teeth in plants what parts under goes to fossilization pollen grains in our body suppose the animals body bones are there but in plant body what part under goes to fossilization pollen grains why because very hardest material exoin is there but so pollen grains are fossilized because of due to presence of chloroplanin in its exoin and one more thing what would be there how it is going to development this is a pollen grain representing the male gametophyte of the angiosperm life cycle what is the ang what is the gametophyte stage gametophyte in angiosperm plants is represented by which stage pollen grain what is the stage of angiosperm plant representing gametophyte answer is pollen grain so here how it is developing this pollen grain this pollen grain undergoes to division first of this pollen grain where it is going here this undergoes to division if you goes to this here this is the mitotic division then now it will be called here first mitotic division this is the first mitotic division due to the mitotic division this nucleus is divided how it is divided large nucleus and small nucleus not a equal division even though it is a mitosis but it is what would be there here unequal mitosis due to the unequal mitosis this nucleus is divided into two nucleus but one is the large nucleus can be formed another one is a small nucleus can be formed this uh, small large nucleus can form a cell called as the vegetative cell small nucleus can form a cell called as the generative cell but here this vegetative cell is the begin size irregular shape and small nucleus what is this here spindle shape this is the big nucleus irregular shape is there this is a what is a small nucleus generative cell nucleus small size then your spindle shape now here one more thing this pollen grain inside it is a vegetative cell this is what is that here generative cell then generative cell is divided what can be formed here two cells can be formed so this stage how many cell stage two cell stage this stage how it will be called three cell stage but most of the angiosperm 60% of angiosperm they can set their pollen grains in what stage two cell stage then here you see 40% of angiosperm they can set their pollen grain at what cell stage here three cell stage 60% angiosperm set their pollen grain two cell stage 40% pollen grain set their uh, pollen grain at three cell stage now you see what is this here this is the two cell stage gametophyte three cell stage gametophyte but now whatever this two cell or three cell stage are, it will reach this pistil where it is pollen pistil interaction pollen to formation next what will be there here there is a fertilization happens now these pollen grains what is this pollen grains here viability what is the pollen viability the uh, pollen grains they retains their germination capacity for some period that period is called as the pollen viability period but pollen viability period in cereal crops what is the period of pollen viability in case of cereals pollen viability in cereal what is the pollen viability in uh, cereals here 30 minutes what are the cereal crops here wheat rice pollen viability within half an hour only they can reach the pistil then only it will germinate otherwise it would be delay this pollen is waste the period in which the pollen is capable to get germination that period is called as the viability this viability how long it will be stay here 30 minutes in the cereal suppose here row they see solanaceae leguminaceae some families are there same viability you can see this pollen viability where this pollen viability suppose here in case of solanaceae family in case of row they see family in case of leguminaceae family so when we see how they see leguminaceae family in this family is here how long this pollen viability retains here months not particular and they have been given months only generally 2 to 3 months here they have the viability 
So in some plants, in Solanaceae, Leguminaceae, Roseaceae families, after releasing pollen grain, they have viable for this year, months of period. But now this pollen grain here, these are useful aspects are there, harmful aspects are there. Generally, these pollen grains are enriched with the nutrients. There are several kinds of vitamin, amino acid, proteins are there. Due to that, in Western countries, these pollen grains, they have been used in the form of syrups and tablets. So that we have pollen tablets. In Western countries, we have pollen, how it will be using here, pollen tablets. As well as how it can be used here, pollen syrup. Here, why is pollen tablets and pollen syrup to enhance the performance of the athletes? And horse races. This pollen tablet, some plant specific plant pollen tablet is made. This pollen tablet it will be given to any horses to enhance their horse race performance. Or any athlete is there for them here it will be given. Those performance will be enhanced. So here in useful aspects here they are the enriched nutrients, vitamin, amino acid, proteins are there. Therefore here they are given to these athletes to enhance their performance. And they would be given to these horse races to enhance their horse race performance. That is a pollen tablet. And here, uh, one more advantage aspect is there: cryopreservation in plant breeding program. These pollen grains, what they can do? Minus 196 degree centigrade temperature. Pollen grains here, minus 190 degree centigrade temperature. They can be cryopreserved. Cryopreservation. Here they can be stored. In liquid nitrogen, what we are using here? Liquid nitrogen. Pollen grains, they can be stored in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degree centigrade temperature. That can be called as the cryopreservation. But due to the cryopreservation, what is the use here? Plant breeding program. It can be used for the plant breeding. What is the plant breeding? A cross is made between desirable plant. Suppose A plant, here it is a desirable pollen, it is there. We can store in liquid nitrogen. Whatever the time, according to our time, we can use it. So plant breeding is, crossing is made between desirable plants that can be called as the plant breeding. For plant breeding programs here, what we can use here, these uh, cryopreserved pollen grains we can use. And uh, harmful aspects, what would be there? Carried grass. You see allergies. Suppose here, carried grass is there. Parthenium historic forest. What can cause here the pollen grains of uh, Parthenia bistori for us? It can cause asthma. Asthma is called bronchitis. It will cause this here bronchitis. So here asthma bronchitis here. Parthenia bistori for us are carried across these plant pollen grains. If we will inhale, what it will cause here bronchial infections, bronchitis, asthma is caused. Like this, this is the detailed account on this male system. It is a pollen grain. Now here you come to the point fistil. What is a fistil here? Sigma style over A. These are the parts you see. This is the here, uh, what is this pistil? Stigma style and ore. This is what is this here? Stigma is there. This is what is this here? Style is there. This is what is this here? Ore is there. Inside the ore, what is the important parts here? Inside, ovules are there. The ovule are the tropus ovule, anatropus ovule, semi anatropus ovule, compilotropus ovule, sarcinotropus ovule. I have given different types of ovule. You can refer from notes. But according to your syllabus here, what is the ovule? Here, anatropus ovule. What is the anatropus ovule? This is the anatropus. This is a bending. This is like this. Here. That means here the finiculus and micropyle, it comes to the side by side. This ovule, what type of ovule here? Anatropus ovule. Anatropus means here, body of ovule, in this case, micropyle, finiculus, they are come side by side. On plain line, it will be there orthotropus without curvature. This is orthotropus ovule. You see, without any curvature here, this is orthotropus ovule. But it is not our syllabus. This is the anatropus ovule, your, your syllabus. If the body, this is a body of ovule. Body of ovule with a finiculus. They are side by side, they can be arranged. That can be called anatropus ovule. 
but you see what it is here in this anatropos fluvial this is a stalk stalk of fluvial which will be called a pinnaculus the stalk of fluvial is called as the pinnaculus there is a junction what is the junction your where body of fluvial it can uh, fix with the pinnaculus a junction occur on the junction what will be there a specific stand is there that stand of it will be called a hilum what is a hilum a specific structure occurs at the junction between body of fluvial and pinnaculus or a junction occurs where the body of fluvial join with pinnaculus the junction is called as the hilum and here this fluvial it can be covered by the integuments outside integument is called as the outer integument and inner layer is called as the inner integument so the body of fluvial it is covered by the integument how many integuments here outer integument inner integument but these are covering total fluvial or they are leaving a gap they are leaving a gap at one location integuments leaving a gap that gap of it will be called as microphyll a gap is left at anterior position of fluvial without integument that gap of it will be called microphyll but here inside this water will be a tissue is there that tissue of it will be called it is a diploid tissue occurs in this here body of fluvial that can be called as the new cells this is what it is new cells it is a diploid tissue from this new cells what will be derived here a cell will come what is that cell here archesporial cell this archesporial cell again divided into parietal cell another one what would be there here there is a spore mother cell inner cell and outer parietal cell that inner cell how it is differentiated macrospore mother cell parietal cell embryo of wall formation parietal cell is using so macrospore mother cell this is a from this finally macrospore mother cell will come from new cell is archesporia mother cell it produce what will be there macrospore mother cell or megaspore mother cell these megaspore mother cell or macrospore mother cell undergoes to meiotic division how many macrospores are forming 1 2 3 4 how many macrospores are there four macrospores of these four how many degenerated this is degenerated 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 three macrospores degenerated how many functional only macrospore only one macrospore is functional this functional macrospore what is developing here it is involving in development of female gametophyte how it is developing here if you give the question right about the female gametophyte development like that you can see what it is here female gametophyte development here these three degenerated and taking this body here here what is this here this is a what is this macrospore this macrospore divided mitotically how many macrospores are forming two first one divided two are forming again this one next mitotic division it will here will become two here will become two next third mitotic division these two will become four here these two will become four so how many mitotic divisions over first two only one macrospore is there first mitotic division one will become two second mitotic division two will become four third mitotic division four will become eight at one pole four another pole four will be there out of this from this polar end one is coming to middle position from this polar end one is coming to middle position then what can be formed here central cell is formed here how many remains here three remains here here how many remains here three remains here here is also three remains but whatever the three nuclei occurs at micropylar end suppose it is micropylar end here it is there this is micropylar end suppose you take an atropos of it it is micropylar end so the three nuclei occurs at micropylar end what can form in here egg apparatus at the micropylar end what can be formed here egg apparatus is formed in egg apparatus what can be there egg cell is there next what is this synergids are there but synergids associate with finger like projection how it will be called here filiform apparatus and next one what would be there these are antipodals these are the antipodal the chalagal end of it will be called here antipodal what is the chalagal end the region of fluvial which is wide opposite to micropylar end how it will be called chalagal end chalagal end three nuclei can form antipodal micropylar end three nuclei can form egg apparatus in egg apparatus the central big nuclei can form the egg then the it is surrounded by the helping cell called as the synergy 
synergies they have association with the finger like projection called as this is piriform apparatus this is a bit will be called here it is called as the piriform apparatus finger like projection how this is called piriform apparatus the central two nuclei how it will be called here central cell or polar nuclei these two nuclei nuclei are two cell is one so here yeah, how many cells are there three cell how many cells are there three cell suppose you see the cell how many cells are there middle position one so this female gametophyte are embryo sac how many cell stage cells are given question seven cell stage nucleus are given here it is considered number of nucleus three here it is considered how many nucleus two here considered how many nucleus two the nuclei configuration three plus two plus three total how many nucleus three plus two plus three means here eight nuclei so the developed female gametophyte showing the eight nuclei condition cell cell condition eight nuclei means three plus two plus three or otherwise cell means three plus one plus three seven cell eight nuclei condition is there now afterwards what would be there pollen fistula interaction is there but before pollen fistula interaction what happens pollination what is the pollination what the pollen grains they have been developed and they can be released outside at two cell or three cell stage here this is a pistil you see the flower in the flower what is this here this is a pistil in the pistil what is developed here this is developed what is this here embryo sac developed in the ovum here inside the ovary ovum inside the ovum this is a ovum but inside the ovum what would be there egg is there and antipodals are there this is the central cell is there like this configuration it is a flower but another plant you see what is this are maybe same plant whatever it may be here what are coming outside here pollen grains coming in the pollen grains what would be there two stems are there otherwise two cell stage are three cell stage one vestigial cell another one is the two stems are there now such pollen grain where it is transferred transferred to the pistil so the transfer of pollen grain to the stigma of pistil is called as the pollination pollination how many types of pollination is there this is the pollination how many types of pollination autogamy pollination zygomy pollination zygomy pollination zygomy pollination and zygomy pollination so that there how many types of pollination are there three types of pollination what do you mean by autogamy transfer of pollen grain to the stigma of same flower is called as the autogamy but in normally autogamy where it will be there pistogamous flowers what are pistogamous flower closed flowers are called as the pistogamous flower example for pistogamous flower pomelina viola oxalis example for the pistogamous flower but chasmogamous flower what is the choice maybe autogamy or otherwise what would be there this is a cross pollination zygomy zygomy method suffers choice in chasmogamous flowers open flowers are called chasmogamous in chasmogamous here autogamy zygomy zygomy any method may be there so you see this here what is this here autogamy means suppose this is a air flower these pollen grains are coming so the pollen grains transfer to the stigma of same flower autogamy suppose you see this plant this is a plant here plant is same on same plant male flower female flowers are there here these pollen grains transfer to stigma of another flower of same plant plant is same flowers are two different how it will be called here zygomy what is zygomy transfer of pollen grain to the stigma of another flower of same plant is called zygomy zygomy is called this is a genetically self pollination morphologically cross by genetically self because of here these two flowers comes to the same plant so genes are same therefore it is called genetically zygomy is called as the genetically self and zygomy what is mean by zygomy You see, this here, this is a zygomy. What is a zygomy? Here, these are the two plants here. You see, this here, zygomy. Here, this is the zygomy. Here, now these pollen grains transfer to the another flower. Transfer of pollen grain to the another flower of the different plant here. These two plants, what is this here? Two different plants. Transfer of pollen grain to this. What is it here? Stigma of another flower of the different plant that is called or it will be called zygomy. Most advanced pollination. What is the most advanced pollination? Zygomy is the most advanced pollination. Zygomy means transfer of pollen grain to the stigma of the 
another flower of same plant plant is same two different flowers zinogamy plants are different flowers are different zinogamy most advanced method of pollination zinogamy this is what is this here morphologically cross pollination genetically cross pollination much more variations occurs in zinogamy here it is helping for evolution zinogamy involving in the process of evolution like this this is a pollination but what are the pollination agents pollination means here i am telling that pollen grains transfer year to year how it will be transferred maybe wind maybe water maybe what is this here biological agents suppose here any biological agents are involved how it will be called here anemophily but anemophily it may be different types if here insects are involved entomophily and here bats are involved here after ophily so reptiles or snakes are involved ophiophily birds are involved ornithophily like this biological agents it can be called with different names non biological agents wind pollination is there next one hydrophily is there if the pollination is done by wind how it will be called here anemophily here here what would be there a a what is this here wind pollination or otherwise water what how it will be called hydrophily A biological agents. What is the biological agents here? Biological agents, insects, and amphibians. Here, bats, here after amphibians. This is a biological agents here. It is called with different names. In this biological agents, if insects are involved, and amphibians. Birds are involved, ornithophilies. Bats are involved, here after amphibians. Reptiles are involved, ophiophilies. Like the different names is there. If the pollination done by wind, any amphibians. pollination done by water hydrophily but of these non biological agents here majority of pollination wind pollination only in non biological agent, what the pollination happens by non biological agent 98% pollination is done by anemophily only in non biological agents what would be there 2% by this here water but of this total pollination how it will be there biological agents entomophily only total pollination entomophily non biological agent majority of pollination is done by wind hydrophily how many genera are involved here mostly 30 genera of monocots involving in hydrophily but hydrophily means on the surface of water pollination is done ap hydrophily example valley snaria but beneath the water pollination is there hypo hydrophily ap hydrophily hypo hydrophily on surface of water pollination is there ap hydrophily beneath the water pollination is there hypo hydrophily but ap hydrophily example valley snaria hypo hydrophily example sea grasses jostira in sea grasses what would be there hypo hydrophily is there but what is the adaptations suppose wind pollinated flower what are the adaptation for wind pollinated flowers if a, any plant is going to take place pollination by wind what adaptations are there the wind pollinated plants here these uh, flowers are small in size they are compactly organized into inflorescences they can produce what would be their large number of pollen grain small size pollen grain large number of pollen grain dry pollen grain whatever plant is going to this year wind pollination what adaptations is showing dry pollen grain large number of pollen small size pollen flowers are small in size then they compactly arranged into the what is this year inflorescences in the flower single ovule is there or few ovules mostly majority plant single ovule is there and otherwise some ovules few ovules are there in this wind pollinated flower feathery stigma are there stigma is what would be there feathery stigma corn cobs tuzzles are there what is this tuzzel adaptation for this year wind ball feathery stigma only making a tuzzles in the corn so they are helping for what purpose here wind pollination and here what are the adaptations in water pollination or hydrophily hydrophily means pollen grains are surrounded by mucilage sheet why because pollen grain they have been released into water by means of water currents they may be damaged but to protect the pollen grain what cover is there around the pollen grain mucilage coat for swim the pollen grain what shape of pollen grains are there ribbon shape pollen grain mucilage coat ribbon shape pollen grain adaptation in which plant hydrophilus plant but now you see what is this here uh, a biological agents Biological agents here you see flies. Fly is a biological agent. Otherwise, next one what would beetles? But whatever the plant is going to this year pollination by beetles and flies, 
what would be their fall order fall order is released by the plants which are going to get pollination by flies and beetles but by means of bees but here bees honey bees are there what adaptation is there attractive petals large size flower big size flower colorful petals attractive petals are there and they they, they release the nectar what they can tell is here bees pollination nectar is released but here generally insect pollination nectar is releasing large size flowers attractive flowers will be there and sticky pollen grains why because this is binded to the body of insects here easily carrying pollen grain to the where it is bringing to the plants so this is adaptation to the insect pollination and uh, one more thing is there pollen drivers what is the pollen drivers here some insects landing on the plants they are getting pollen but they are not causing pollination without causing pollination whatever insects is getting pollen from plant and nectar nectar is getting pollen is getting but not bring about pollination they can be called as the pollen drivers pollen thieves they are pollen drivers are there this is what it is here various types of pollination after pollination pollen crystal interaction is there pollen germination two sperms brought they are released into synergy one is fused with the egg they got is formed another can fuse with uh, central cell or polar nuclei endosperm is formed these two fertilization occur within single ovule a single embryo sac that is called double fertilization occurring of two fertilization two fertilization what are included syngamy and triple fusion syngamy result zygote formation triple fusion result endosperm formation zygote undergoes to division what can be formed here embryo this embryo monocot embryo structure dicot embryo structure you refer the endosperm how many types of endosperm endosperm it can provide the nutrients for the development of this here embryo these endosperm three types are there nuclear free nuclear endosperm ilobear endosperm cellular endosperm with the diagram i have given notes you refer types of endosperm which of nutrient provide the nutrients for this here uh, what would be the developing embryo then afterwards total after fertilization ovule of it is modified seeds ovule is modified into seed but here the integuments of ovule seed coat seed coat of it will be called outer seed coat testa inner seed coat tegment inside what would be their embryo and the side endosperm but in some plant during development endosperm completely used those seeds called non albuminous seeds example non albuminous pea beans in some plants here even the embryo is developed endosperm retain those are called albuminous seeds example albuminous seeds wheat rice maize dover these are the albuminous seeds normally grass seeds are the albuminous seeds but in some seeds what would be there new cell is also retains after developing of embryo sac some new cell is there perisperm that is called persistent new cell is perisperm example pepper and wheat perisperm is there but this seed tentatively stopping its metabolic activity that is called dormancy generally how long it will be dormant suppose here highest dormant period where it will be there here highest viability or highest dormancy lupinus orthoticus how long it is here 10000 years dormant period is there during excavation excavation here these seeds have been taken out here again here it will be sown new plant has come then now seeds flowering happen lupinus orthoticus here the most dormant highest dormant are most viable of the seed the viability means the period which is capable to get germination of seed that is called seed viability but highest viability till date lupinus orthoticus and date palm seed how long it is date palm 2000 years the viability of date palm seed is 2000 years lupinus orthoticus is the 10000 years but normally months to years will be there but highest viability but next after seed fruit formation how many types of fruits are there there is the m fall fruits parthenocarpic fruits true fruits here the fruit which is developed after fertilization that is called as the uh, true fruit but here ovary is developed into fruit that is generally after fertilization ovary is going to development of fruit that is called true fruit you see the true fruit uh, different brinjal lettuce finger Uh, whatever vegetables you are eating, true fruits only these are comes under. But what is the false fruit here? Along with ovary, any other floral part developed into fruit that is called false fruit. Example, what is the false fruit? Strawberry, cashew nut, and uh, next one apple. These are the false fruit. 
Salamis is developing into fruit in apple and strawberry. Those are fast fruits here. And next one, parthenocarpic. Without fertilization, fruit is forming parthenocarpic. Example, banana fruit is the parthenocarpic fruit. Uh, this is the uh, next one. Another thing will be there. True fruits and uh, false fruits, parthenocarpic fruits. These are the types of the fruits here. And one true fruit example, you see this here, true fruit, true be there. You see that the cocos, lucifera, coconut. But in this fruit here, there are three layers are there. Outer layer of fruit is called epicarp, middle layer is called mesocarp, inner layer is called endocarp here. But these true fruits, simple fruit, aggregate fruit, composite fruit is there. Simple fruit means normally monocarpellary or multicarpellary or bicarpellary. What type of over is syncarpal gynosium? Mono or bi or multicarpellary, syncarpal gynosium, simple fruits are formed. But here, what is the case here? Uh, composite fruits and aggregate fruit, aggregate fruit custard apple. Custard apple compulsory it is formed from multicarpellary apocarpus gynosium. Custard apple, multicarpellary apocarpus gynosium. What is composite fruit? Entire inflorescence is modified as a fruit, composite fruit. Example, mulberry fruit, jack fruit, uh, pinus, pinus, what is this here? Pineapple fruit, pineapple, jack fruit. Next year, mulberry fruit are the composite fruit. What is meant by composite? Total inflorescence is modified into fruit, composite fruit. These are the here. One more concept, apomixis. What is apomixis here? The formation of seeds without fertilization is called apomixis. Apomixis, where it will be there? Asteraceae family and grasses. But apomixis is a asexual process mimicking the sexual reproduction. One more question important. You have to here, uh, get this information from your notes. Apomixis. One more thing, polyembryony. What is polyembryony? Occurring of many embryos within the single embryo sac. Or development of many embryos within the single embryo sac is called polyembryony. But how this is formed? These uh, vegetative embryos, original sexual embryo, from zygote it is formed. But vegetative or adventitious embryos, how they are formed? From incubants or new cells. New cells tissue, it can form this year vegetative embryos. Example here, uh, the new cells can form vegetative embryos in citrus plant and mangifera, mango plant. So, occurring of many embryos or development of many embryos within single embryo sac is called as the polyembryony. This polyembryony, new cell or polyembryony occurs in citrus and one more plant, mango plant. This is the concept in the sexual reproduction in flowering plant. You check with your notes and NCRT book, whatever the book. While referring, if you have any doubt or difficulty, WhatsApp me, seek the clarification. Okay, thank you, thank you one and all.